when your name pops up on all these lists for like, the Heisman Trophy, or whatever, how do you kind of process that? Um, it's shocking, you know, just because my whole life I've been like the, the person that's kind of like in the back, just kind of like not getting that type of like that type of limelight. So I mean, now it's kind of it's great because I feel like everything that I'm, I'm, I've worked for in the past, you know, is finally coming to us. So, what do you need to do in order to make that a reality? Oh, uh, just keep on taking it day by day. That's the most important thing to do. I mean, if you look too far ahead, then you're going to probably end up messing up. So, I mean, take it day by day, get better each every day, and you're going you're gonna to be good for sure. We'll give it to you like this. Caleb Wilson, thanks you for coming on campus. Yeah, I heard about that. I heard about that. So, yeah, that, that, was, that, that was big. Your biggest game was against Corona, right? Centennial, yeah. Played against J.J. Taylor, actually. Just for individual performance, was that the biggest game we've ever seen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I kind of forget about it because we lost it. You just answered the question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was, that was like my, I think that was my best, best and worst statistical game. Talked to Scott about it recently. Yeah. yeah. He just shakes his head. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, before the game, they said, like, whoever wins this game is going to win the championship. Just because our offense just was so good. So. Playing against somebody that good. Did that prepare you, even though it's a different level? Did that prepare you for competition in the Pac-12? I mean, yeah, playing that Sarah prepared me. You know, just being around all those top tier players. Like when I was a sophomore, we had a Dory Jackson who was in the NFL, John Houston who starts at USC, my Shane Green with the CLS, Jordan Lazarus. So we we have players. So I've never really been like awed and really surprised about competition. Do you do you guys play SC this year? Yes, we do. Okay, so their defense has uh, a few of your old buddies. Right. What kind of a greeting do you think they want to give you? So, uh, I mean, they won last year, so I think they're pretty satisfied. How did you keep that mentality, uh, even when you came in Arizona, you weren't starting right away, but being that big man on campus back at Sarah, and just keeping that positive attitude? I mean, like I said, I've always been kind of in the shadows, and I've never really been super respected like that, so I mean, I use it to my advantage. How do you find the balance between operating within the structure of a play and using your abilities as a, you know, a great arm you can run? How do you find that balance? I mean, it's not that difficult. I mean, I've been doing it for so long that, you know, it's kind of something that's second nature. You know, I'm always going to run the play at the coach calls, and, you know, if that doesn't work out, that's playing, then uh, you got to do what you got to do. And was that a was there ever a point, whether it was in Wee or high school or whatever, where coaches got on you for doing too much and you felt constrained at all? Or um, I mean, I've, I've got been accommodating? I mean, I've got on myself a couple of times for doing too much. So, you know, sometimes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do too much. I, mean, I know what I'm doing too much. After that game last year against USC, Playdown came up and he saw you out, gave that big hug. What was that moment like, being able to share that? I mean, that, that was kind of disappointing just because I knew that say we were to win the game, that wouldn't happen. So, I mean, it was kind of something that I respect. You know, I respect that a lot for him to come up to me, but then again, it's like, if we won, then would that have happened? Did he say anything to you? Uh, he just said, like, you, you made your hometown proud. You know, you, you did your thing. So, maybe it was that his motivation. So. I know you don't like losing, and things are going real well against Arizona State. And then, you know, you, you have to watch the sideline as, as, as things turn around. How much does that stuff in your head? I mean, as long as the opposing team knows that, as long as the, as long as the opposing team knows the real, like they know what, what should have happened, they know what's going to happen, then that's all that matters. So I used to see it at all the different rivals camps here out in, you know, Baltimore, right. California, and stuff right. like that. And, you, you know, you would joke even back then, Braxton and Burmeister would be out there too. You tell them, hey, you're the quarterback on the half week, so you should be throwing me all on routes. Exactly. And now you get, you just a couple years later, you're out here representing the University of Arizona as a quarterback. Um, you know, obviously, you never joke around. You had that confidence in yourself. What's that process been like to go from to, to go from like you said, kind of slept on a little bit in high school to the position you're in now? I mean, it's funny. I mean, I was never invited to like the Elite Eleven Army game, none of that stuff. And I mean, if you look at the rosters of those games and those quarterbacks, you update that. You, you did some of the camp circuit this year. Uh, what's it like seeing 
high school guys, younger guys, like uh, having, you know, I assume they look up, they have a lot of admiration for it. I mean, I went to the Manning camp, I think I was in the gym, so I, I saw a lot of different SEC and kind of quarterbacks, and the different thing about that was the fan base out there, you know, they're super loyal to their fans, I mean, to their players, and I'm from Arizona, not from Arizona, but I go to school in Arizona, so it wasn't a lot of Arizona fans out there, so I was kind of just like on the back, just, you know, looking in, like, okay, that's fun. So you like you use you use that as motivation. Exactly. I mean, because they don't know who I am. So I feel like the better I be in life, the harder I play. Yeah. Unless you don't know. So I need to be over right there. Yeah. At Sarah, all four years were very memorable. Um, me just being around like all those guys. You know, when I was in high school, I didn't realize I was going to school with Dory Jackson or Shane Green. John Houston. It was kind of just something that was kind of normal. So it wasn't like, oh, wow, that's him, that's him. It was kind of like, that's just my favorite. What did you talk to Rasheem at all? I talked to Rasheem, I think it was like two weeks ago. That was how he's doing. What do you expect out of He's doing well. I mean, he got drafted with third round with the Seahawks. So, I mean, it's, it's a perfect, perfect fit for him in a perfect situation. So, Jalen Green, he's at Utah State. I just talked to him. Was that last, last night, night like before that? That's one of my close friends. I just talked to him. He, you know, told me to keep doing my thing, and I, I wish the best for him. If he had been allowed to play quarter, what would have happened? It would have been a lot. I mean, that kind of played a role in me not, you know, not going to USC because you know, I was his backup at Sarah High School. So when he goes there, he they change him to receiver, and then they tell me, yeah, play quarterback. Like, you know, Jalen lived around the corner from me, like he used to give me rides to school. That's one of my best friends. So it's like, how you, how you think you gonna get me doing that if you just switch to me? Pretty smart kid. Well, yeah, going back to that uh, Colorado game last right. year, uh, Brandon gets hurt. What were your initial thoughts? Um, I mean, that game was it was it was different because I was really in tune. Uh, the game before that, I was going through injuries, so I wasn't very into the game like that. But I mean. That particular game, I was, you know, watching closely. So when he got hurt, it was kind of surreal because I looked at the sideline and everybody was looking at me like, "You going in?" I'm like, okay. "So I went in and then tried to do the best that I could." So then, when you get in there, obviously things went well, right? Uh, in that game. So what was it? What was it like for you just playing that game? There were so many holes that were just wide open, and a lot of times Colorado was there, but you were able to make plays and. And make uh, make big games out of it. What was that like for you? I mean, that just speaks upon my story. You know, just letting people know that I was a backup. I was a backup. A lot of people are usually given, like, given those opportunities super early, like when they're freshmen, or just because that's how the situation was. But I mean, I was the backup quarterback, and then now I'm the starting quarterback. So do you think you surprised Colorado? I like to think so. Cause I wasn't I wasn't really expected to play. You know, I, I may have had I played against NAU and I got injured, so it wasn't really. I didn't have a lot of film at all. And how how did teams play you different as you went along? Obviously, you had big games as well. Right. After I mean, Colorado, you surprised, but did teams play you differently from that point? Yeah, I mean, teams started catching on, which is that's gonna happen. It's football. Teams start catching on. They start you know making their different adjustments. They start stopping things that were working early on. So that's when you know. Me, me being able to throw, you know, when he start helping. When you're balancing being a college football player with class load, with being, you know, the face of the football program to a certain extent now, what do you feel like the college athletes, the NCAA, can do more for you guys as student athletes? Um, I mean, they're doing, their, they're doing a great job and, you know, doing them, you know, as long as they don't have any complaints, then that should be fine. So you don't see any, uh, any major radical changes that are necessary to the amateurism model? Um, what do you think? Uh, how about, how about uh, NCAA football 19 with Quill Tatum? There you go. That, that's it right there. <laughs> so what kind of adjustments do you feel like you've had to make this offseason to prepare for teams that have now had a, almost a full season of football right. on you? Um, I would say me being able to throw. You know, I've always felt like I can throw the ball pretty well. Even last year, you know, a lot of people said I ran too much, but I threw more than I ran for. So, yeah, I mean, me being able to throw really helps a lot. What did you learn at the Manning camp about playing quarterback? Um, I learned a lot. You know, it was a, it was a great opportunity for me to go out there and really, you know, see those other type of quarterbacks like Chase McSorley, um, Jake from Jalen Hurts was out there. So it was really just being around those guys and. You know, seeing how they do the ball, and, you know, 
size them up sometimes. Did Manny talk to you at all? Um, I, it was 40 quarterbacks there, so it wasn't really, <laughs> it wasn't really a lot of time to have one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I talked to Eli Manny for a little bit, but it wasn't anything super serious. How do you, how do you think you stacked up? Like you said, there was 40 quarterbacks there. Like, where do you think you would, you, you see yourself? How do you feel you stacked up against some of those other quarterbacks? Um, then? I think I did pretty well. Uh, I got a lot of feedback from you know different gym and I were you know watching the, watching this workout. They said you know I mean. I don't think it was anything that I, I was surprised. I don't think mm -hmm. I did all that well, but I mean, they didn't expect me to throw at all. So I think me being able to make those throws actually opened my eyes. Thank you. So do you want to be a what? What are you looking to bring to the team to kind of change that makeup outside of the players, the the model, the the, the yeah. team dynamic, the focus? You no, know, it's uh, it's all part of the, you know what you do, your communication, your players. I think that uh, you know it's. Uh, it wasn't completely broken either. I think that every, every, you know, everybody looks at, uh, at things in, in different ways. Um, we've got some dynamic players in, on the team. Uh, one, one of the most explosive players in the country uh, is there right now. And, and so there's, there, there's always like to think that, you know, we look back at our, our season last year and, and uh, uh, just looking at, at where we were, you know, with six, or seven, or eight freshmen. I think the first two players on the field are on defense. Um, it's, I think it's bad. I mean, they can say the best thing about freshmen is it becomes a sophomore. Yeah, so right. it's a little different for us in, in football. We don't have one of them. So mm -hmm. they, you know, they, they, those guys are uh, on the field. It's a good thing, but we've got them in the team. Uh, but fortunately, a lot of guys are in the club. And uh, I think I'm really in love with the guys that are in uh, these guys are working progress, but I like their, I like you know how they work since it's, it's been here. Okay. Okay. Well, final question: What does Arizona, What's the advantage that Arizona brings that you can sell? What's the advantage there? Oh, we got Tucson. Yeah. So it's, a, it's a, we got a great university. Um, just a, a fabulous campus.